All right, what about quantitative traits? With quantitative traits, what we're going to look at here is frequencies and frequency distributions. So how do we create those frequency distributions? First of all, we talk about a population of plants. And so a population is a group of plants of the same species that you're interested in measuring a particular characteristic. So let's say, for example, that I have a field with 100 plants, 100 bean plants in it. And I want to measure uh, the, I used flower number example in the lesson, so let's just use that. I want to measure the number of flowers on a bean plant on a particular day, let's say the 30th of July. Uh, in the summertime. And so uh, here's what I do. I go out to the field and here are my 100 plants. And I took a look at plant number one and it happens to have three flowers. And I take a look at the next plant and it has 10 flowers. And I'm uh, just making this up as I go along here. Here's another plant that has three flowers. Here's one that has four. Here's another one with four. Here's another one with four. Uh, this one has uh, two flowers and uh, so on. So I'm just going through each plant and looking at how many flowers it is. But when I'm done measuring all 100 plants, then I can make a frequency table like the table that you see in your lesson on the left-hand side of the page, where we have column that shows the number of flowers on a plant, um, the number of plants that have that many flowers. All right, so first our flower number, one, two, three, four, five, and on to, I don't know, 20 flowers. And then we count up how many plants, how many plants had just one flower? We count them all up out of 100. And let's say there are no plants with just one flower. So zero plants. Uh, how many plants had two flowers? Well, we know there's at least one because we measured it earlier. Let's say there's just one. How many plants have three flowers? Uh, one, two. And then how many plants have four flowers? Uh, one, two. Let's say that was a four flower plant, two, three of them, and so on. So we're counting the number of plants that had this many flowers. Then in the table, we can calculate the frequency, which is the number of plants divided by the total number of plants, which is 100. And so the frequency, 0 over 100 is 0. This would be 0 0.1. This is 0 0.2. This is 0 0.3, and, and so on. Now, it isn't always 1, 2, 3 like this. I'm just calculating. Uh, based on this particular example. Now we can make something, uh, a chart, a figure that's a frequency distribution. The way we do that is to take that table that I just erased and convert it into something that's easier to read. So along the bottom we have number of flowers, And that ranged from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to whatever. What did we say? 20 was our max. And then here we have frequency, which was our third column. And let's say that it was you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and so on for our frequency. Now, uh, uh, Number of plants that had uh, one flower, as I recall in our table, was zero. So our initial point was here. The number of plants that had two flowers, I think, was one. It was one percent. And so this is 10 percent. So this would be just a little bit above the line. For, for three, what was it? Um, just a little bit higher and so on. I can't remember exactly what the numbers are now. But you can put your percentages here. Now, 
Typically with a quantitative trait, what happens is for the very small numbers in your range, like 0, 1, and 2, you don't have a very high frequency. And for the other end, where you have a high number of flowers, you don't normally have very many plants that are high either. You have most of your frequency kind of toward the middle range. And you end up with a curve that looks something like this. This is called a normal curve, where the, the, what this is telling us is somewhere around here is the most, the, the most frequent number of flowers on a plant. Let's say it's somewhere around 10 flowers. It would mean that the greatest number of plants in our population had 10 flowers. And there are a lot on either side with 9 and 8 and 7. And with 11, 12, and 13, that would be all kind of in this range. That's where most of our plants were. And there were some in the tails. This is an example of a quantitative. type of trait where you have a normal distribution or what's sometimes called a continuous curve. So this is a classic uh, quantitative. But uh, I also talked about the example, what if instead of being quantitative, this was a qualitative trait like we studied uh, earlier with Mendelian characteristics. What would our example look like? Well, what it would be is instead of having a peak like this with, with Fair, fair bit of a spread or distribution around that center point. Instead, it would have a couple of very sharp peaks. We would have, for instance, a lot of plants that had exactly, let's say, three flowers. And then another uh, situation where we had a lot of plants that had exactly 17 flowers. And so our curve would look, let me get a different color. Our curve would look a little different. On the case of a qualitative tree, we might have had a curve that was like this. Not much in one, two, or three, but one or two, and then all of a sudden in three, we had a large number of plants, and then not much again until we got to 17, and we had another spike of plants. This is characteristic of a qualitative trait, where you have your greatest frequency in just a couple of situations. And when you take a look at the relative sizes, uh, you can get a hint of what the, what the inheritance might be. If this peak is, say, three times greater than this peak, this is three times larger than this peak, this kind of gives you the idea of a three to one uh, ratio, which says it's one gene. And so this is a qual qualitative. So quantitative is going to give you a nice, smooth curve, a normal distribution. A qualitative is going to have a couple of spikes.